Okay, next up we have the Collins test in experiment 20, and this is a test for aldehydes. Only aldehydes can react to, uh, with this experiment. So we will uh, test to see if we get a silver precipitate at the end. So an aldehyde will be mixed with uh, silver nitrate and ammonium hydroxide to form a silver ammonium complex ion. Uh, we will add some hydroxide, and if the experiment is successful, we will create a carboxylate, ammonium, ammonia, water, and finally, solid silver. All right, we're starting off by adding one milliliter of silver nitrate solution to each of our test tubes. Next, we're adding two drops of ammonium hydroxide solution to each of our test tubes. You can see though the ammonia gas being formed over the top. Go on. All right. So, uh, so far we have added the silver nitrate, sodium hydroxide, and ammonium hydroxide. And if you look closely here at my uh, acetone sample, uh, we have no reaction, and that's what we are expecting because we have a ketone in acetone. So our solution is uh, pretty much just a tannish gray solution with a little bit of solid at the bottom. And if you look closely, you can see a little bit of a gas uh, that is adhering towards the top of the test tube. That's a little bit of ammonia that we're forming inside of the test tube. All right, I'm going to go ahead and place this down. And let's take a look next at heptanel. So we have our heptanel solution. And I'm going to go ahead and add a few drops. And let me go ahead and start shaking the solution. And if you notice here, we're starting to see a little bit of something forming at the top of the solution. And I will go ahead and tilt it sideways. And do our best to take a look at the sides of the silver mirror. So I'm going to set this one down. And this is an aldehyde, so this is heptanal, so we should definitely see a reaction. And we're starting to see the formation of a little something here at the top of the uh, meniscus. Let me go ahead and shake it up and see what occurs. Ooh, all right. So... Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set this one down. We might start to see it turn a little more silvery for us in just a moment. I'm going to move on next to benzaldehyde, which is another aldehyde. And let's add a couple drops to our test tube, see if we get some similar situation as we did in heptanol. And if you notice here, again, we are starting to form some precipitate towards the top of the solution. And it is rather shiny <laughs> and metallic looking. Uh, let me go ahead and shake up the test tube a little bit, see what we get. And we might start to see this turn a little more solid in just a few moments. But if you notice here closely, we are starting to get a little bit of silvery uh, solution uh, forming on the end of the test tube right here. All right, so far so good. And then uh, just to go back to our ketone, acetone, we, we definitely do not see any of that precipitation occurring on uh, in this test tube. All right, our heptanol is definitely much more precipitated. And uh, on the sides of the test tube, you can see it does look somewhat silvery. Okay. Let's move on to our next sample, which is 3-pentanone. Three 3-pentanone three is a ketone, so we do not expect an, a precipitate to form in this case, but we will see. Okay, so let me shake it up just slightly. And we do not see any precipitate happening at all with the three pentanone. So, all right. All we see is wet, wetness and moisture happening on the inside part of the test tube. Okay. Let me move on to the next sample, which is two 
propanol. And 2-propanol is an alcohol, so we do not anticipate a reaction here, but it's one of the samples we are testing. Let's take a look. And looks like no precipitate. And our solution is staying as it was. Okay. Uh, the last sample that we are testing is acetophenone. And let me go ahead and add a little bit of sample to that test tube. Looks like all we're really getting here is a little bit of like a oily mess going on on the edges of the test tube and uh, we expect no reaction here because acetophenone is a ketone and it looks like it's trying to do uh, two separate layers because uh, you know it is not soluble in the solution uh, well silver nitrate is dissolved in water so you know so it is not soluble in our aqueous solution here Although it looks whitish, it is not the silvery color that we are seeing in the other two samples. So let's take a look at our two aldehydes here and see how they're doing. So if you notice, we have a very, very uh, noticeable white precipitate in both cases. For the heptanol sample, it looks like we have it pretty much floating at the top there. It's kind of like a blackish precipitate with some uh, silvery whitish portions there and in our benzaldehyde test tube which is here on the right side uh, you see that we get a little more precipitation happening on the test tube sides and uh, looks like these two are only two positive uh, for the Tollins test. Okay so after warming the sample slightly in a warm water bath uh, we see here that uh, we have uh, heptanol and benzaldehyde giving us the nice silvery mirror. So I'll go ahead and rotate those two test tubes for you. And although we have dark solutions for the other compounds, we have no silvery precipitate happening in any of the ketones. So we have negative for acetone, negative for 3-pentanone, negative for 2-propanol, and negative for acetophenone. Uh, acetophenone seems to have kind of a two-layer system where we see some globs uh, that just won't dissolve in the solution and a little bit of black precipitate as well. All right, so uh, just to reiterate, this has been the Tollins test, and our two aldehydes, heptanol and benzaldehyde, have tested positive.